Before we discuss how governments manage their economies, we must first understand why. There are many reasons governments manage their economies. Generally, governments want to achieve economic growth and an increase in economic activity, as this creates jobs and so lowers the rate of unemployment. However, if the economy is growing too fast, this may create high inflation, so governments also want to maintain a low and steady rate of inflation, thereby smoothing out the short-term fluctuations in economic activity. Governments also seek to expand the economy's productive capacity and potential output in the long run, and to reduce poverty and redistribute income. So, how do governments manage their economies? Governments manipulate aggregate demand, AD, with demand-side policies, or they manipulate aggregate supply, AS, with supply-side policies. Demand-side policies are a set of policies used to manipulate AD to smooth out short-term fluctuations in economic activity. Demand-side policies can be fiscal or monetary. Fiscal policy is the use of taxation and government expenditure, G, as tools to manipulate AD. The level of taxation affects consumption, C. Fiscal policy is usually controlled by the country's parliament or congress. Monetary policy is the use of money supply and interest rates as tools to manipulate AD. Changing interest rates affects business investment, I, and to a lesser extent, consumption, or C. Monetary policy is controlled by the country's central bank. For example, the Federal Reserve conducts monetary policy in the U.S. By manipulating components of AD, such as C, G, or I, governments can change the level of AD, thereby increasing or decreasing economic activity. Both fiscal and monetary policies aim to increase AD in times of recession to help boost economic activity and create jobs, and pull the economy out of recession. We call these expansionary policies. Expansionary demand-side policies will shift the AD curve to the right to AD1, leading to higher output from Y to Y1, thus creating jobs and lowering the unemployment rate as well. However, expansionary policies can be inflationary as they increase the price level, as seen from PL to PL1 on the diagram. Expansionary fiscal policy involves decreasing taxes and increasing government expenditure, G, such as the U.S. government's stimulus packages during the 2020-2021 COVID-19 pandemic. This is because decreasing taxes will lead to higher disposable incomes and thus increase the C and I components of AD, and increasing G will also directly increase AD. Expansionary monetary policy involves decreasing interest rates by increasing the money supply. Lower interest rates encourage more borrowing and less saving, and so the C and I components of AD will increase as a result. Both fiscal and monetary policies also aim to decrease AD in times of inflation to help slow down the inflation rate. We call these contractionary policies. Contractionary demand-side policies will shift the AD curve to the left, to AD2, leading to a lower price level from PL to PL2, but also lower output from Y to Y2, which can lead to a higher rate of unemployment. Contractionary fiscal policy involves increasing taxes and decreasing government expenditure. G. This is because increasing taxes will lead to lower disposable incomes and thus decrease the C and I components of AD, and decreasing G will also directly decrease AD. Contractionary monetary policy involves increasing interest rates by decreasing the money supply, such as the ECB's or European Central Bank's decision to raise interest rates in 2023 to help fight inflation in the Eurozone. Higher interest rates encourage more saving and less borrowing, and so the C and I components of AD will decrease as a result. Supply-side policies, on the other hand, aim to expand the economy's productive capacity in the long term by increasing the quantity and slash or quality of the factors of production, FOPs, and thereby increasing the economy's potential output shown as an outward shift of the production possibilities curve from PPC1 to PPC2. 
Supply-side policies can be market-based or interventionist. Market-based supply-side policies aim to promote competition, labor market flexibility, and to increase incentives for worker productivity and business investment. This is accomplished through a variety of policies, such as deregulation, privatization, anti-monopoly legislation, trade liberalization, which are all policies to promote competition and efficiency. Increasing labor market flexibility can be done by decreasing the power of labor unions and lowering unemployment benefits, while increasing incentives can be done by lowering personal income and business taxes. Many of these market-based policies also have demand-side effects and also impact AD, but the main diagrammatic representation of their effects is the rightward shift of the long-run aggregate supply curve from LRAS to LRAS1 thus increasing the economy's full employment level of output from YFE to YFE1. Margaret Thatcher's economic policies of the 1980s in the UK are a great real-world example of market-based supply-side policies. While these policies may increase competition, efficiency, and labor market flexibility, they also can lead to widening economic inequality. On the other hand, interventionist supply-side policies are all based on increased government expenditure, G, on education, healthcare, infrastructure, research and development, R&D, as well as industrial policies. Interventionist policies increase aggregate demand, AD, in the short term, as they involve increased government expenditure, which is a direct component of AD. The demand-side effects are shown as the rightward shift from AD1 to AD2. The supply-side effects of these policies are that they increase aggregate supply, or AS, in the long term, as shown in the rightward shift from AS1 to AS2. China's Belt and Road Initiative during the 21st century is a great real-world example of interventionist supply-side policies. While these policies may increase productive capacity and lower income inequality, they can be inflationary and are a great burden on the government budget.